Wow. Good day and welcome to Mental Health and You. Thank you for joining us again on another episode. Episode for the soul and for the heart and for the mind. That's Mental Health and You. And in that spirit, my guest is, is, my guest is going to bring it on. Baptized by community. Baptized by the community, whether it's on City Island or in the streets of Harlem, particularly Linus Avenue, where he was inspired to write, inspired to express himself through the spoken word. It's been a wonderful and a inspiring education for him. David Ellis. And I'd like to bring him on and talk about it. Thank you for How having me. <laughs> thank you. I want to, you know, David, first off, thank you for being part of Mental Health and You. Yes. And I want to start with that quote, you know, in preparation for this episode, baptized by community. I was reading that and it just stirred me and it just moved me so. Oh. Because as a poet, you know, because you, as a poet, you know, just coming of age, whether it's on City Island here in the Bronx or in Harlem, particularly on Lenox Avenue. Yes. I mean, it so inspired you to write. And you've been writing for like for years. Your latest book is Honey in Harlem. But before that, you wrote a book, City Island on the Beach is called? Yeah, Beach and City Island. Beach and City Island. But I guess what I want to know as we start What's it all about? What inspired you? What, what inspired? We talked about Lenox Avenue. We talked, yeah. but what inspired you? Who are you, the writer? Uh, I love the question. Uh, what inspires me every day is uh, nature and people. You know, um, and mm. the most important part, God, uh, God. You know, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and um, I always want to know, like, where did I start getting that that thing to write? But I just think that it um, just being in church all my life, I think the pastor's words always just stayed with me. And uh, working in Harlem for 19 years, you know, um, just embracing the community, embracing the people, um, walking down Lenox Avenue for almost two decades. So I have, uh, it was in me to, to write this, to write uh, two books about Harlem. So um, I love it. Well, you know, when you said growing up in Harlem in a Pentecostal church. Oh, no, growing, growing up in um, Mount Vernon. And <laughs> okay. Mount Vernon. Going, yeah. Yes, okay, my bad. <laughs> you know, Harlem was like my second home. Mm. Um, I grew up in a church in Harlem. Okay. And every Sunday, my mother and I would take that bus down from the Bronx to 121st and Lenox. Wow. Walter Memorial AME Zion Church. Mm. I grew up in the Methodist church. Yes. And yes. like you, I was inspired by the minister. Mm -hmm. You know, I was inspired by the singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was inspired yeah. by the whole aviance, by the whole, you know, environment of the black church. How poetic it was. Yes. You yes. know, the, the cadence of everything in the in the in the pastor's um sermons and the yeah. singing. Yeah. The way people clap their hands, the way they stomp their feet. Yes. Yes. You know, so I, I get what you're saying. I, I really empathize and I really, I really, I really can relate to that because it's something, if you don't come out of that experience with some sort of soul in your in your belly, you know? Oh yeah. Cause I, I always yeah. I always I always put it this way, like how my um my soil is still wet, you know, from Indeed. We didn't, we didn't just go to church on Sundays. We went Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Like it, yes. was, it was our second home. Yes, <laughs> so it was, uh, yes uh, indeed. Because I not only went to church, like you said, I sung in the choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we had we were down there on Saturday rehearsing for the choir. My mother, my grandmother, my, my aunt, my lady, my cousins, they were all deaconesses wow. in the church. Nice. So, yes. Yeah, so I was always in some way involved in the church yes so yes i i guess you know but that i want to get back to that phrase because i was so amazed by it you know and so it it it, it touched me so baptized by community mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that type, particularly when you're walking up and down Lenox Avenue. Yes. Yes. You know, um, I remember that corner, 125th and Lenox. I still remember it. Mm -hmm. First, you know, I remember it so much is that there was a tree of life on one corner, which was a bookstore, a black owned bookstore. Yeah. There was yeah. A, a black record store on another corner, mm -hmm. black owned record store. Wow. wow. Um, there was always some type of preaching and singing going on, always some type of activity, some type of, you know, just some, some restaurant. You could, the smell of chicken, the smell <laughs> of, you know, sweet potato pie was in the air. Yeah. Yeah. So when I get into um when I myself was led into uh poetry. Yes. I started yes. off in the church. I started off in the church um reciting poems for Easter Sunday oh, for nice. uh, oh, nice. Christmas. The Christmas program. That led to um me doing stuff downtown, you know, in the village. So yeah, I, I, I understand this, you know, I, I really, and I was so moved mm -hmm. and so moved. So when I read about your work even more, your artwork, your poetry, which we're gonna talk about, I was so inspired because I saw a lot of myself mm -hmm. in, in you, in your work, in your inspiration. I, I, I wanna thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you because you brought me back to a place that you know I hadn't really thought about a lot lately. Gotcha. The roots of my poetry. Yeah. yeah. You know, and how talk about your latest. Yes. Honey so, and Harlem. Um, so um Honey and Harlem is my second book. Um my okay. uh, I'm doing a trilogy. So uh the I'm doing three parts. Uh, the first one is Honey in Harlem, and the second one that just came out is um, If Lennox Avenue Could Talk. Um, okay. if, Lennox is, if Lennox Avenue Could Talk is basically, you know, my, my walks down Lennox Avenue, um, hearing what people are saying. Um, so um, James Baldwin has a book, If Bill Street Could Talk, and I was just like, you know what? Yeah. I, I thought about it. I was like, let me, let me create this title, If Lennox Avenue Could Talk. Uh, I just, I, I, love, I love that avenue. It's, uh, it, it speaks to me, you know, um, it has spirit, it has soul to it. So uh, this is the second, uh, the latest book. If uh, if Lennox Avenue could talk. Okay, awesome. Would you? Um, we're gonna I'm, later on in you know maybe in the second half. In this, yes. I'm gonna ask you to um, if you can share maybe a couple, one I or two love pieces. To. I love to. I love to. But you work as a teacher in Harlem now, right? Yes, uh, 19 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. How have your work inspired? your students yes um well next month is poetry month and um every time every oh, time as a teacher. yes yes i'm a teacher yeah so i, I always oh this uh they, they're so cute they come up to me mr ellis i wrote a poem i actually got, have to check my email um one of my students mariah she's, she sent me an email she wrote a poem and she wants to share it with me um so they they, they get inspired to know to know oh you wrote a book you wrote a book and i just let them know that if i can do it you can do it also you know, so step by step, I just work with them, let them know to type it up, you know, not just write it, but type it so, you know, you don't lose it. Um, but I'm always trying to inspire them to just create, whether it's writing, painting, whatever, whatever they are passionate about. Mm -hmm. it's, all about it's all about passion. Well, that's wonderful. You're a wonderful teacher because yeah. I had a teacher inspire me. Mm -hmm. The church was my teacher. Yes. Uh, being in the schools was my teacher. So absolutely my parents, I had a mother who used to recite poetry to me as a wow. child. And that that also laid a foundation in me about the mm -hmm. spoken word and the impact it can have on other people. Yes. You know, and it has stayed with me all these years. It's you know, you talked about in uh in doing the research for this, you talked about art, your poetry as an art form. Yeah, it, I, 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 I started to go to um, New York and Poets Cafe, you know, um, oh my God. early okay. on. So I, would, I would see the poets on stage, but I was I always um, tried to treat poetry like uh, the way, a, um, let's say, an artist would treat art on canvas. So um, instead of saying it, I would always, you know, display it, putting it on canvas or in framing it 
or um, how I started writing poetry on driftwood, living here in City Island, going to the beach. Mm -hmm. I always try to just treat it like art because it is art, you know, and um, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about poetry. I mean, I had so many memories with Noah Rican. That's another thing yeah. we have in common. <laughs> I, I, when I really get really brave, yeah. the church is one thing, school is another thing, you know? But when I really started to get, I thought myself, I fancied myself this poet uh, in the Puerican in the, uh, and Bohemian tradition and, the, you know, tradition of, uh, of uh, whether it was um, James Bowen or someone else, you know, or Nikki Giovanni, who I loved, or Maya Angelou. Yes. I made my way, yes, long time ago to the... Uh, New Rican Poets Cafe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we go into break, so yeah. we're gonna we have to talk so much. And I became a regular with New Rican for oh, wow. a few <laughs> a small world. Yes. Sir. So yeah. yes, I was so familiar. But as we go into break soon, we're gonna talk about it. Okay. We I want to talk more. I want you to share more about your what poetry means to you, what your art has meant to you poetry as an art form. But I also want to talk about what it's meant as a healing form. Mm -hmm. If you and for others. Yes. Because it's been a it's been a it's been a soul. It's been a soul soother for so many. Yes. Particularly in these times. So um Dave, we're gonna take a break. Okay. We're gonna take a break and after the break we're gonna come out and we're going to talk. And I'm going to have you uh, share, if you don't mind, maybe one love or to. two pieces, love okay? To. I love to. Thank you. Okay. We're going to come back with Mental Health and You and I host David Ellis after these breaks. UNICEF Kid Power is offering free online dance and exercise videos with a twist. Kids stuck at home can get active and save lives locally and around the world. Sign up for free at unicefkidpower.org. COVID-19 has changed how we spend weekends with the girls. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to brunching instead of late night munching. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's okay to have questions. Now get the facts at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Good day and welcome back to Mental Health and You. I'm your host, Cynthia Tins. And it's been my privilege today to have as my guest, David Ellis. I want to welcome him back. David is a poet. David is an artist. And uh, he's been inspiring a whole lot of people for so many years, especially me. <laughs> and um, But David, as we were going to break, you yes. mentioned yes. New Oregon Poets Cafe, and that, that just stirred a memory. Yes. Because yes. if I can share, um, when I wanted to like expand, call myself expanding my rising as a poet, mm -hmm. in the tradition, I dare say, of maybe Nikki Giovanni and uh, Sonia Sanchez and Maya Angelou, was, who were was some of my heroes, and James Bowen, the likes of these. Um, I found myself um, through an ad I saw in the paper at the New Americans Poets Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. And for the longest, I went down there like a few, like every Friday they would have open mic night. Okay. I was, I was, I was, I was, never, I was never brave enough to go on stage. I would always just watch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. We can talk bravery. Boy, my <laughs> God. Oh my God. It was... Uh, it was something because I would go down there like every Friday night after work, I get off, make my way down to the East Village, but open and I would not even sign up. I would be watching other people. They maybe they had the slam going on at the time. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. The slam. Yeah, that that's another story in itself. <laughs> but I was I didn't I was more interested at that time in the open mic, because I just wanted to just 
express myself. I want to get on the stage like I saw other people doing. Yes. And I yeah. said to myself, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Gotcha. You know, so uh, one night I, I actually uh, put my name down. So one o'clock in the morning or so, um, you know, with a cup of, after a few uh, vinos, feeling a little good, <laughs> feeling a little courage. I went up and I, um, I did some of my poetry. Nice. Right. That was the beginning of an, like an eight or nine months odyssey with them where I became a regular. Nice. And then I expanded and I I moved on to other venues in that area as well as um, the East Coast, Jersey, Philadelphia, Washington, New Orleans. So, but it was just getting up there, uh-huh. feeling that inspiration, you know, and I, I never really felt that, you know, I was all that I dare say as a poet. I mean, but I found out later that I was impacting people. Yeah. Yes. I was making a difference. Man, don't get it wrong. I was good now. Okay. <laughs> I was good. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, but I guess it goes, is, I'm saying this to say you never know what impact you're making. Yeah. You're talking about your students. You never know what impact has you ever had a, um, a, a has there ever been an example of one coming to you and or a few of them coming to you and, and wanting to discuss poetry or your art? Yes. So um when you when you've been teaching um you know going on 19 years, you will have students come back. Mm-hmm. And- you know, high school, you know, or college, yes. and they will tell you things that you forgot that you even said to them, you know. Um, yes. But what I want to definitely do, um, just inspire them to let them know if, you know, even though I wasn't bold enough to go on that stage at New York and Post Cafe, I found a way to uh, still express myself and write the books and display the poetry um, and still be able to affect people, students. So, um, yeah, they had... Um, Students are always writing and they're into hip hop and hip hop. I let them know hip hop is poetry, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So we always have that dialogue with them, you know? So it's beautiful. So I thought about something. You're you're inspiring them in so many ways. That's what poetry can do. It's been my experience. That's what the written word can do. That's what a piece of art can do. Whether it's on a page or on a wall. Yeah, when, was I started, yes. when I started when I started writing uh, books, I made it my um my my truth, my passion to even every every book that I write, I mention I mention God, you know. Um, yeah. I mention Jesus because that is uh, that's the path. That's that's my um that's my calling, you know. And I do it I do it in the uh, in the book form, you know. Um, so that's wonderful. How has your faith inspired your poetry and your artwork? Oh, big time, big time. It's, uh, you know, that's when, what reminds me is that we're not going to be here forever, you know? So what, mm-hmm. I, what I do is I always, you know, write and, you know, try to try my best to stay in the moment. You know, I treat every book like it's my last, you know, I treat every poem like it's my last, you know, I try to just put a lot of energy into uh, that aspect of, of writing, you know? Well, I remember in my preparation also reading where you said something to the effect that you want to leave something. Yes. You want to have something that people will remember. Mm-hmm. And yes. I just think that that's a human nature. Mm-hmm. But it's also the, the mind of the poet, the soul of the poet. What are we living here? How are we impacting? Yes. And now, it's something that you, uh, well, I can not speak for myself, but it's something that you don't really think about as a teenager yes. in your early 20s. But as I'll be 42 on, on Friday. <laughs> so it was just like, uh, I'm like, wow. You know, it's just like, you know, it's, 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 it's getting up there. <laughs> well, I remember it was 42. I remember when I was 42. And I think it was just a couple days ago. But that's beside. <laughs> but you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. The best is yet to come, David. You want to share some work? I would love to. I would love to. So um, I'm reading from my fifth book. Um, if Lennox okay. Avenue, Lennox Avenue could talk, 
and this poem is called um, In Harlem. Go ahead. All right. In Harlem, it's hot, sweat pouring down his face, hustlers on the corner too late. They will be back tomorrow, not too far from the Apollo. Kids see them every morning on their way to school. They yell, hey, young bloods, don't be like us, stay in school. Line of people patient waiting online in front of the Salvation Army for the free lunch served at noon. Streets slowly change. The sun shines, African Day Parade. The kids play, families pray. Can you please spare some change? Rent's too much to pay. Landlord increased it the other day. She really wants to stay, but can't afford to stay. In Harlem, born and raised in Harlem, really loves Harlem. In Harlem, in Harlem, in Harlem, in Harlem. In Harlem. Cocoa mango incense, shea butter black soap, looking for another job. Yesterday he just got laid off. The audacity of hope. Souls of beautiful folks lingers through the streets everywhere that I go. In Harlem, cotton comes to Harlem. It's picked each day. Miss, are you ready? African women in dashiki sit and ask if women want their hair braided. Stare wow. as they walk by. Pigeons flapping their wings flying in the blue sky. Remembers as a kid Easter Sunday with his bow tie. Mother taking a picture of him in front of his favorite store. It's not there anymore. Now it's a shopping mall. Bean pie's final call. Okra and tomato gumbo. Teenagers in the, in the park playing basketball. Church ladies in bobble in hand walking slow. In no rush at all. Hat man selling his hats in front of the corner store. In Harlem. In Harlem. In Harlem. In Harlem. God is great. Getting up slowly off his knees after praying three times a day. Brownstone renovated hoping that she can make it, running fast to the bus before it pulls off. Homeless man sleeping on the sidewalk, using his boots as a pillow. The cops wake him up. They sit outside the restaurant, eating brunch, laughing, drinking wine, watching everyone walk by. No matter black, no more black cabs, just cab with meters. So many different features surrounding every corner in Harlem, in Harlem, in Harlem. Graffiti still remains on the side of the few buildings, soon to be gone forever. No matter the season or weather, let's stand together. Let's stay together. Let's pray together in Harlem, in Harlem, in Harlem, in Harlem. Wow. Thank you so much. Thanks. That's so awesome. <laughs> that reminds me of all the uh, the sceneries. Yes. That reminds me of the smells of Harlem. That reminds me of the sceneries. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of so much that I grew up with. That kind of sort of took me home again. <laughs> yes, that's what I, and, and I want to thank you so much. What brought you to City Allen as a fellow Bronx as a fellow Bronx Knight? Oh, what man. brought you to City Allen? <laughs> there's, a, there's a scenery and a smell there too. Uh, you know what? I I love Harlem. Harlem, my heart's definitely in Harlem, but I just love being surrounded by water. Um, it's something. Yes. That, I grew up in Mount Vernon. Um in the apartment building. So it's like, you know, they were used surrounded by bodegas and stores and everything. There was no re really walking to the water. <laughs> so, um, so being here for 11 years, um, actually I started writing haiku poems. Haiku is 17 syllables, 575. Um, just being able to just stay in the moment, you know, be surrounded by water. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. You know? That's wonderful. I mean, water has always been an, a source of inspiration to me. Yes. And another life I have spoke about it on this on this show. Mm -hmm. I was a member of the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, I have say I'm a sailor. Oh, nice. nice. I don't think I talked about so much of my Coast Guard days, but I'm a sailor. Oh, I wow. took up sailing a couple of years ago in City Island, and I hope to be sailing again this, this season. And the water has always been a source of soothing. So I, I really understand. It's always been a source of inspiration, like poetry, yeah, like the I, rhythm, when, I like see the, when I see the water and nature and the sun, like I just um, you can't yes. look you can't look at nature without thinking about God. You know. Um, oh, that's, absolutely. That's, that's who created everything. You know. So. Um, oh, absolutely. So I love to be absolutely. surrounded by surrounded by nature. Well, so that's wonderful. In the few minutes we have left, what's about what's this driftwood? What is that? Oh uh, yeah, driftwood. Create? Yeah, driftwood is the uh the wood that's like washed up from you know from the ocean and everything. So um mm -hmm. winter time and fall time is sometimes the best. You get like the best pieces. So I started to treat um 
driftwood like you know uh, an artist treats canvas you know um Ooh. and that's what i uh my actually my son inspired me to start putting paint on it <laughs> so right. i would i would write the the poems on it and then i would just you know splash the paint on it you know so uh that's beautiful that's wonderful so where can we find you where can any up upcoming events i actually you know, after after this, after this interview i'm heading to um Kente Royal Gallery in, in Harlem. I have a book okay. signing from uh, 1 to 5 o'clock today. Okay. Yes. So and you, is, there, is there a website? Is there a Facebook page? Is, I, I know it's, it, it's on the, um, it'll be in our credits, but. Yes. More books coming? Yes. Um, I, I plan on writing a book every year. Um, after this book, I'm going to collaborate with my son again to do um, a book called. Um, Caterpillar, you will fly, and it's basically okay. about uh, about how we, just like the caterpillar, doesn't know uh, what form it's going to take on. We don't know, we have no idea what our spiritual bodies are going to look like. So it's a uh, mm -hmm. children's book, but basically that's what it's about. So it's a long poem along with my son's illustrations. Wow, that's wonderful, David Ellis, poet, artist teacher, inspiration. I want to thank you so much again thank for you. being a part. Thanks for having me. Thanks you. Thanks. You. you know, I want to thank you so much for bringing poetry in the lives of so many people, bringing art in the lives, the love of the written word. It's meant so much for me. It's meaning so much for other people as well, your students, those like in a venue who needed to hear that. Yes, it's art, and art for art's sake alone is good, but it's also so much more. It's a healing, it's a soother, and that's, and I, I thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you again for being a part of Mental Health in You. It's something very soothing, something very mental about poetry. <laughs> Keep, uh, something very mental and soothing about art, about the water, about sailing. Yeah. Go find, and find the poetry in your life today, wherever that may be, find that soothing spot. And I wanna thank you so much. Peace and blessings to you from Mental Health. Good day.